For section 4.4, we're going to look at making conversions. So we're going to look at how to convert uh, volume to weight. So here we have bushels of flax, and it says how many bushels of flax seed are there in 2.4 tons if the conversion factor is 39.368 bushels per ton? Well, let's start off with what we're kind of being asked and what we know. So I'm going to set up two uh, ratios or two fractions. So first of all, I say, how many bushels of flax seed are there in 2.4 uh, tons? So I'm going to say, how many bushels are there per 2.4 tons? So I set up a fraction or a ratio. The conversion factor, and the conversion factor means that the, the, the um, ratio will be the same. So the conversion factor is 39.368 bushels. So bushels bushels. So bushels are on top. So I'm actually going to keep 39.368 bushels per ton. And this is per one ton. Now there's a couple of ways you could do this. You could use cross multiplication, which I've shown before. Um, you could also just notice that from one ton to 2.4 tons, and you could, this is like any kind of fraction, what do you multiply by? Well, I'm actually multiplying by 2.4. From 1 to 2.4 is multiplying by 2.4. So for the top, I'm also going to have to multiply by 2.4 to get to how many bushels I need. So just use your calculator. You have 39.368 times 2.4.4, and you get 94.48. And remember, that's bushels. So this is your final answer. You have 94.48. If you were to do the cross multiplication, which you could do as well, you would basically just cross multiply these two values and then cross multiply these two values um, and you'll come up with exactly the same answer. But let's just do that. So 2.4 times your 39.368, which is equal to 94.48, is equal to 1 times my question mark. So we'll call that x. It's actually better to use uh, variables, even though we don't use a lot in this course, it's better to think in terms of variables. So 1 times x is just 1x, and then I would have to divide by the value in front of x to solve, but because it's just a 1 in this case, um, it doesn't change the value, so you get the same answer, 94.48, regardless of which way you do it. So hopefully that makes sense if it doesn't go back and uh, watch through the example. There's some uh, conversion factors that are not shown on your data pages. These are your data pages that, again, you should be printing off and using for the whole course. Um, they do have a table of conversions. It is not comprehensive, which means it does not have everything on it. Uh, there are also useful formula, uh, like for temperature and for Pythagorean theorem and such. But for this section, we just basically use the table of conversions. So you know what I do typically? Typically, if the conversion factor isn't on here and I'm doing an assignment, I would use Google conversions. So what I do is I go to Google and I say convert something to something and it has a really, really useful conversion um, uh, calculator for it that does everything for you. So it's the best way to kind of do it, uh, especially if you're, I mean, you're doing the course online anyways, it's really good to, to utilize the tools that are there. You won't be able to use the Google conversion on your exam or your provincial exam, but typically on the provincial exam, they would have, uh, sometimes they have the conversions written on the, on the, uh, in the question for you, so you don't have to guess. But like I said, this table is also very, very helpful um, for a lot of questions. So don't forget to check your, your data pages. Um, here are some useful conversions that I have down, um, just like from pounds to kilograms. One pound is equal to 0.45 kilograms, approximately. One ounce is equal to about 28.3 grams. One ton is uh, approximately 0 0.9. Now this, this one is a little weird because it depends on what tons you're talking about, if it's like a metric ton. Um, but I think typically what they do is they always take one ton as being 1,000 kilograms. I mean, technically that's what they use in Canada pretty much all the time. So I wouldn't really worry about this one so much. I would really keep in mind that one ton is equal to a thousand kilograms. Sometimes in your book they change it, but don't worry too much. And then one pound, of course, is equal to 16 ounces. So these are conversion factors you probably want to jot down and keep them handy for any quiz or test as well. Um, I found that they were ones that were useful in uh, assignments, but were maybe perhaps missing. All right, let's go into one another example here.
So we have James is making uh, chicken bobs, chicken kebabs, sorry, for 14 people. His recipe suggests about seven ounces of chicken per person. So let's let's write that down first of all. We have seven ounces per person, and that's one person. He's making chicken kebabs for 14 people. And at the store, the chicken, the weight of the chicken is labeled in kilograms. Well, I have it in ounces, so hmm, we're gonna have to actually do some conversion here. And then it says, how much chicken should James buy? So we need to figure out x over 14 people so how many ounces question mark x ounces for 14 people and again we can do our cross multiplication or just notice that this is a simple fraction conversion right we just have the denominators being multiplied by 14 so the top should also be multiplied by 14 so we have 7 times 14 which is 98 <clears throat> so we actually have a, uh, an answer of 98 ounces, but remember that it is labeled in kilograms. So let's go back up to our conversions here. Do we have pounds or ounces to kilograms? No, but you know we do have um, we do have ounces to grams, and then we can convert that to kilograms quite easily because we know there's a thousand grams in a kilogram. So here I have one ounce is equal to 28.3 grams. We could also use the pound, we could use the ounces to pounds and then uh, convert that to kilograms. It's, it's kind of up to you. Um, let's do the ounces to grams to kilograms. So ounces, one ounce is 28.3 grams. So I have this, I'm gonna multiply by 28.3 because there's a lot more grams in, per ounce. So I figure that out. Um, you can even set up a little fraction here. So you have 98 ounces, um, Per, I don't know how many grams uh, and I know that there are 28.3 ounces per one gram so again <clears throat> I'm multiplying by 28.3 in order to figure out what the uh, what the value is because per ounce there's 28.3 that's probably the easier way to think about it so I have 98 times 28.3 which is equal to 27 73.4 and remember that's in grams. So I have to take that and divide it by 1,000 to get it into kilograms, right? Because there are 1,000 kilograms, or 1,000 grams in every kilogram. So we have to divide by 1,000. So I take that value, divide it by 1,000, and I get 2.77 kilograms. So at the store, the weight of the chicken is labeled in kilograms and says, how much chicken should he buy? He should buy 2.77 kilograms of chicken. Right? And your answer should make sense in terms of the question. So just check the question, make sure, does your answer make sense? If, it's, if you get like 4,000 kilograms, that doesn't make sense. Or 2,000 kilograms, that doesn't make sense. Because um, typically that's not how much you buy at the store for 14 people. So you can always check that way as well. All right, a crane can lift 6.5 tons. And again, we're gonna, we're gonna assume that, this is, uh, that each ton is worth 1,000 kilograms. It says sandstone weighs about 149.5 pounds per cubic foot and a container holds 70 cubic feet. So this is 149.5 per one cubic foot. It's always good to write down the information that you know. A container holds 70 cubic feet. So again, this is like our ratio. So the cubic feet go on the bottom. So I'm gonna leave that on the bottom Oops. Uh, and that's 70. Can the crane be used to load the container into the train? Well, let's see here. A crane can lift 6.5 tons. So we know we have to convert everything to tons eventually to compare. And right now, everything is in terms of pounds. So I have to convert my pounds to tons. So I have one cubic foot to 70 cubic feet. That's a multiplication of 70. So I know I have to times the top by 70. That's why it's a really good idea to have unit conversions because it's very simple. 149.5 times 70 is uh, 10,465. And remember that is in pounds, right? Let's go back up to our little chart and see if we have a pound to ton conversion. Hmm, not really, right? And even if you look on your data pages, we know that we have a ton to kilogram. We know that one ton is equal to 1,000 kilograms. Well, maybe we can work with that. So one ton is equal to 1,000 kilograms. 
Okay, so if I have 10,465 pounds, how many kilograms is that? Maybe I can work that way instead. So let's see, do I have a pound to kilogram? Yes, I do. So one pound is equal to 0.45 kilograms. So there's actually, um, one pound is worth less than a full kilogram. One pound is less than a full kilogram. It's actually only 45%. So if I go back down here, how am I going to get to kilograms? Well, I know there's going to be fewer of them, and my conversion factor was basically 45%, so I multiply by 0.45. So I have 10,000. 465 times 0.45 and I get 4,709 4,709.25 kilograms and how do I convert that to tons? What's my conversion factor? Do you remember? I divide by how many how many kilograms are in a ton? A thousand. We have that written right up there. Perfect. Okay, so I divide by a thousand basically just move my decimal place three places so I get 4.709 tons is this okay? I'm allowed how much? I'm allowed 6.5 tons because that's how much the crane can lift. So you would say yes, the crane can lift. So that would be your answer. So you're comparing an answer to uh, what the question is asking for. Last example here. So Sally is selling, Sally is sending Swedish sausage, <laughs> selling Swedish sausage that weighs 30 Oh, sorry, three pounds. That's confusing because it looks like a one. Three pounds and three packages of sliced salami that weigh 100 grams each. So we got two different types of weight measurement here. Great thing about living in Canada is we use this type of thing all the time in grocery stores and in construction. We use two different types of uh, units for measurement, which is kind of uh, confusing. If the package's total weight is less than two kilograms, then she can ship it at the cheaper rate. So we're trying to see, can she? So we're trying to compare to kilograms. We have pounds and grams. Grams are kind of easy. Pounds, not so easy. So we'd have to, we'd have to um, convert the pounds to grams or kilograms. So let's see, what was our rate again? Pounds are 40.45, right, per, uh, per kilogram. So three pounds are equal to how many kilograms? Oops. Remember, it's about 4.45, so it's about 45%. But in this case, I'm going to divide. And the reason for that is, let's check. So three pounds per X kilograms. I don't know how many kilograms there are. But I know that for one pound, there are 0 0.45 kilograms, right? So if I looked at this, I would say, okay, well, my one, gram, my one pound to three pounds is multiplying by three. So my 0.45 kilogram to X kilograms is also multiplying by three. So you have to make sure you know what you're doing. Actually, I did say divide, but I meant uh, multiply. So it's sometimes a really good idea to set up your, um, your unit conversions here. So one pound per 0.45 kilograms. So in three pounds, there's going to be multiply it by 3. So I have 0.45 times by 3 is 1.35. And that's in kilograms now. Now I just have the sliced salami. She's buying three packages at 100 grams each. That's just 3 times 100. Remember that's in grams. So that's 300 grams. How many kilograms is that though? For grams to kilograms, I divide by 1,000. Because for every thousand grams, that's how you make a kilogram. So to convert them, I have to divide. So move the decimal place, one, two, three. So it actually gets to, uh, to be 0 0.3. If I add these two values together, I get 1.65 kilograms. Can she ship at the cheaper rate? She can, because it's less than two. So we would say she can ship at the cheaper, whoops at the cheaper rate. Again, if you noticed, I, I might have even made a mistake with this one if I didn't set up the unit conversion and uh, have my, my fraction. And the power of having the fractions is you keep the units, the same units on top and on bottom, 
And then if you have a unit measurement or unit uh, ratio, which means that one of the top or bottom is one, it's very, very easy to convert because you know where you're dividing or multiplying or um, what to solve for your unknown value. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, uh, just run through the video again, check through the examples, and um, good luck.